Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft update video. We have Snapshot 19w44a for 1.15 and this one's got some changes and some bug fixes but first of all a little bit of Minecraft news. This is the new mob known as the Piglin Beast that we got to see revealed at Minecon for 1.16 and it's now going to be known as the Hoglin. A name has been chosen and this article doesn't really tell you anything else other than that. And we have a tweet here from Jens about the Piglin mob. The question is, will Pig struck by lightning become zombified Piglin or regular Piglin? And Jens clarifies that they're most likely going to remove that feature because it'll end up working differently. And digging around in more of Mo Yang's tweets, I found this reply to a question. Will we get smithing and fletching table functionality in 1.15 or 16? And here the response is, not in 1.15 and I can't promise anything for 1.16 either. So we might have to wait quite some time before we find out what these blocks are going to do. So let's talk about some of the changes in 44A and jump into this crafting bench. You can see here I've got some honey bottles and you probably noticed it already. They are now stackable. So previously they wouldn't stack up but they can now go into piles of 16. And along with this you're able to craft bottles and honey blocks together to make them. If you have four bottles inside of your little crafting area right here then you'll be able to craft it into four bottles of honey from a honey block and just as a reminder of course four honey bottles make a honey block so that makes total sense now I was just editing this video and I had a thought that I had to come back and insert to this part of the video now that this stacks to 16 does that make it a really valuable food source because this is supposed to heal your saturation up all the way which helps you regenerate your health and now you can carry around 16 bottles of this with you at a time. Anyway, let me know what you think of that with a comment down below. Oh, and the whole me swinging my arm thing? That's actually a visual bug. In first person, it looks like this. Cow, get away! We... I'm trying to record a video! Iron Golem's damage progress is now based on the ratio of current health to max health. So if you remember in one of the previous snapshots, attacking an Iron Golem and doing damage to it would cause its texture to change. Now I have struck this Golem three times right here and its texture change. This is a regular one with 100 hit points. Over here, I've summoned one with 200 hit points. So in theory, I'm going to need to hit it, what, five or six times before its texture change. And there you go, exactly double. So there was a slight oversight here and now this feature scales to the health of the mob. Then from the feature list, we have vertically moving particles are performing better when they collide with blocks and improve performance of chunk saving. I don't know how to demonstrate either of these things to you, but you know the deal, it's 1.15 and they're optimizing all sorts of things and this should lead to improved performance. Now there was a bug that I think should have been listed as a feature. There is a difference between creative mode and survival when it comes to throwing items on the ground. You might use this for timing of a redstone contraption. In survival, these items would despawn after five minutes. In creative, it would be just one minute, and that has been amended. So now the time is the same for both creative and survival. Any items thrown on the ground will take five minutes to despawn. So before we get to the rest of the bugs, I would like to go over some features I didn't quite understand in the last snapshot, and I want to give a shout out to my buddy Cubfan, who also makes snapshot videos, who explained exactly what the change to the elytra was. I didn't particularly understand it, but as you can see there, my wings very easily deployed. The change was to allow the elytra to be deployed easier for when the player is moving upwards. And this means when you jump off the ground, you are then able to activate your wings. And so flying on a multiplayer server should now be a lot easier. Another feature Cub showed that I missed from the bug reports was the lighting system for maps. Now these would always appear nice and bright, but of course if you were to go into a cave, they would remain bright. However, Mojang decided to change this and I think it makes a lot of sense. So when you go into dark areas now, the map's visibility changes as well, which is a smart change. In the last snapshot, there was also an important bug fix and change to the dispenser. You can see this one here has just filled up a bottle of water. However, if there's no water in front of it, what it will now do is actually dispense that bottle, which is the correct behavior. Last snapshot video, I also tried to show you this new feature using a fire charge to light up a campfire. I was just very unfortunate in picking the wrong position. As you can see, the likelihood doesn't mean you're actually going to light the campfire every single time. Anyway, one way that you definitely can do that is by having the uh, dispenser up above. 
And where I've been goofing around with honey blocks in the week, I've also learned that the sticky effect that stops you from jumping up and onto another block works when you are on any block that is smaller than a half slab. So you can see all of these ones here actually stop me from jumping off of the block. As soon as it's a little bit higher, you can jump like normal. So now we're going to get into some of the important bug fixes from this snapshot. I do just want to say though, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you're subscribed. As you can see, if I do miss something in a snapshot video, I'll be sure to try and cover it in the next one. So remember, the game's rendering engine is being worked on, and this leads to all sorts of quirkiness appearing here, there, and everywhere. And if you look behind me at the clouds, notice how they move in accordance with where I am moving. This is best demonstrated in an amplified world. So if you just anchor your eyes onto where the cloud is and then watch as I move, the cloud's position slowly changes. And yeah, that's, that's an odd one that's been patched in this snapshot. Someone spotted that shulker boxes would connect to fence posts and to walls, which is not what they should do. When you open them, they do actually disconnect for a moment and then connect again, which is kind of cool. But anyway, this will no longer be the case. So the evoker mob is supposed to have comically oversized evoker fangs in this update. Let's see some of those in action. We've got the Vex getting summoned first of all. Whoa, they, they are way too big. Those fangs are ridiculously big. <laughs> Check that out. Ah, and look at that. Wow, that was crazy. So yes, there are still issues with the rendering engine as to be expected. And this funkiness with like the gray thing appearing on top of grass blocks and on leaf blocks and sometimes on mob eggs is supposed to be patched now. And here we are in 19W44A. Looks like this one has been taken care of. So remember, the Mojang team are working on the rendering engine for the game to improve performance. If you see anything funky, be sure to report it to the bug tracker. And that's where we're going to wrap up this video. If you're looking for something else to watch, check out the evolution of my Minecraft bases. There'll be something to click on the screen and in the description box down below. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. As always, thanks for the support. And hopefully I'll see you next week with another one. Bye-bye.